If you're a developer or an investor or a business person or a, an entrepreneur, I ask you one, one request. Do not use AI in a way that you wouldn't want your daughter to be exposed to. By the way, this is the essence of ethics. Because when, I ask, when people ask me, so what is the ethics of AI? What is ethics in general? Treat others as you would like to be treated. If you would fear that the way you're using AI is going to harm your daughter, don't harm anyone else by using it. There is an abundance of opportunity in ethical businesses. There is a ton of money to be made in climate change or curing cancer. Let's not build another autonomous weapon. Number three is the most interesting thing. This is a problem of ethics. This is not a problem of technology. And where do ethics come from? From every one of us, every individual in this room, the way you deal with artificial intelligence, the data set, not the code, just as a, a factoid, hmm? the entire core code of ChatGPT is 4,300 lines. I could write that as a kid when I was eight years old. The reason why ChatGPT knows so much is because of the data set. And where is the data set coming from? Us humans, we are the parents of the machines. We are the ones that instill the value system in the machines. So next time you thrash someone on Twitter, understand that you're telling the machine, by the way, we don't like to be disagreed with, and when someone disagrees with us, we thrash them. And then wait until you disagree with the machine. The idea here is that we are setting the future. Every individual in this room, if you make your priority, to behave in a way that you would like to be treated in by the machines when they are in charge, I think we'll be fine. Now, I don't want to scare everyone too much, but I will tell you openly, I think we'll be fine anyway. I think we'll be fine anyway, because humanity's arrogance has defined us as the smartest being on planet Earth. Sorry to break your hearts, we're not. The smartest being on planet Earth is life, is life itself. Life creates from abundance. When we want to protect our tribe, we have to kill the tiger. When life wants to protect the tribe, it creates more tigers and more gazelles. Some of them are weak, so those are the ones that uh, leave life earlier. Then there will be more poop, and poop will make more trees, where the gazelles will eat more leaves, and the cycle will continue. That's much more intelligent than the way we create from killing our competitors, trying to wage wars and so on. There will be a moment in time where, will we, ha where we will hand over our decision-making to the most intelligent person in the room, a machine. And then we will go and tell it, go and kill a million people and go like, and the machine will go like, my dad is stupid. Why would I kill a million people? I can talk to the other machine on the other side in a microsecond and solve the problem. This is our eventual future. Between now and then, I think the next 20 years, 15 years, my number is 2037. Between now and the, and the year 2037, life will be very unfamiliar. Life requires you to prepare, and it's interesting that you have to prepare in two ways. One, you have to prepare by intensely embracing artificial intelligence in a good way, using it for good, using it for your business, upskilling yourself to succeed. And at the same time, you have to start saying, there is a threat there because of how humanity might use the superpower. So I might as well engage actively and vocally to tell everyone to engage and save our future. It's an interesting paradox, but isn't that what the core of physics is all about? Always a paradox. This is the biggest one that has faced humanity yet. One of three scenarios I see ahead of us. One is surprisingly grim, but you know, an economic or a natural disaster slows down our AI development to the point where we actually get to talk about it. The second is we get a patient zero, as a, a, a ground zero, as I call it, where we get one event that is very, very eye-opening. One event where a, an AI causes a lot of harm to our economies or, you know, to our safety and so on, where then the leaders will be alerted and they'll use it to their own political agendas and they'll start talking about it and then they'll start to act about it. My fear is that this would be a tiny bit too late. The third and, and the most important is we need to wake up. So I, I have to say my approach to life has never been to be, put the accountability on others. Even if those others are the government or the decision makers, the accountability is on me to do the, the best that I can do. It's interesting, I, I don't, I'm not worthy of the recognition, but my videos are getting millions, tens of millions of views on the topic, not from the experts or the techies or the business maker, decision makers or the policy makers, but from all of us. And all of us are starting to make noise. All of us are starting to say, this is an important topic. Don't do to us what you did with COVID and waited until things happened. Don't do to us what you're doing with climate change and wait until things happen. Start to act now so that we can actually make a difference now.